have you. Introducing the legend itself, non-profit profit. The epitomic representation of a citizen nation. Words encapsulate the many problems which we are facing. The engineer to the designer, the flame of the fire that for the platform for citizens that elevate higher. The sound of the trumpet, warning war has begun between the rebel aliens and the ignorant ones. Bring my fellow citizens to the plane that I'm from, cause ignorance will leave your brain dead, same as a slug. A straight shooter focused like a laser, same as my gun. The epitome and summary of all the above. Bridging gaps like overpasses, hitch on bridging the masses. Breaking barriers and walls and threatening ball when it smashes. I'm a general, like captain, the lieutenant, and leader. Since following examples of my citizen senior. The pillars of wisdom my professors and teachers. All citizens studious to progress the procedure. Now I carry the torch, not prophet, prophet, and preacher. Gatekeeper to the kingdom, ever told me St. Peter. Life bearer and savior, Luciferian Jesus. With the power to convert you by the end of this thesis. Keep the words of the written and a reflective condition. Free your mind from many sins of interjecting suspicion. Keep your logic and reasoning, common sense in your wisdom. The only tools you need to have when your adventure begins. Pay attention, citizens, to the words that I'm speaking. Every Sunday at 4 o'clock, this real talk on Vendetti's block. Right. Welcome to Vendetti's Block. Episode what? six. Is episode six already? Already. Stop it. Already. It's just stop. We're baby. running through it. <laughs> <laughs> right? Running through it. We've made hey. a compile of, of self help shows that if you listen to all of them citizens, you you can you can you you're on the right track. Yeah, you can take it to the bank because it what will work. Do? Take it to the bank, cash it in. And it's a win. <laughs> yeah. What's going on, Steve? I'm just hanging, Joker. How you doing, buddy? Oh man, it's, it's been it's been a rough week. It's it's, it's been a rough week. Been a, I'm not gonna lie. It's been a What's rough happening week. with your week, man? What's we you know? Well, as you see right now, I'm doing stuff while I'm doing stuff. Yeah, I see you That's doing stuff been, as you're doing that's stuff, what I've been man. The whole week, it's just, and I had I don't know if I got food poisoning or if mm. I had some kind of viral. Mm-hmm. Man, my I I can't I can't I if I get stomach issues and mm-hmm. like the Digest. Oh man, I'm I'm out. I'm okay. Out of commission. I'm not trying to do nothing. Okay. A lot of that's been going around. People have just been real, I know, and real I tired. Until, um, I talked to one of my people. He's like, "Yeah, there's a couple of viruses going around that are GI related." And I'm like, "Oh man," and I because I love to eat, right? You know, and everybody was cooking. And I, I'm just looking at food, like, and I know what's gonna happen if I eat it. I'm like, so I was just I was like pretty much, you know, fasting. Right, and it, it would have been best if you didn't go to like uh, someplace and eat crab or something. You know what I'm saying, Joe? Because that's not real good on the old belly when you're eating crab, and you're not feeling good with your GI tract off. Well, I'll tell you Just what I did you last know. night, though. I went to Hoo Hot. <laughs> oh, Hoo Hot! I went to Hoo Hot. Hey, okay, man, it did. It, that's it, some free it, publicity. It Hoo Hot, you got that? Hoo Hot. I had to test it out. I was like, let's see if I'm ready for it. Cause my, uh, one of my bros is barbecue, and I was like, I gotta see if I'm ready for beer and barbecue. And right, right. So I was like, if I can, if I, if I can uh, contain this Hoo Hot, good. He had, he had to warm it up is what he had yeah, to do. You real. know, he had to warm his stomach up. Then he could go to his barbecue. Right. And that was off the chain. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so what's been going on with you, Mr. Lindsay? How's it? You good? Yeah, working hard, man. Getting some, uh, um, just down there at the Midwest Life Center doing my thing. Working hard. Um, getting uh, getting some people on track. And uh, it's it's really, really good to see. Makes the heart glad when you can do that, man. It really does. I help, feel that. Man, help me get out there after life, man. That's what's up. I'm glad we're back on the show because we didn't do the show last week. It was Mother's Day, and mm-hmm. there was a bunch of, you know, circumstances that were, you know, you, we, can't, you can't really help some things sometimes. You just got to let it go and then just, you know, get back on it. Yeah, so and you got to give it. mom some love, baby. Exactly. You know, that's that's what's up. Give mm-hmm. a shout out to all the moms. The family the dynamic, last week, right? Yeah. You know. The pinnacles of the family dynamic. Amen. Moms, Moms well done. we love you. For sure. If you're out there doing a good job, I'm, I, we're applauding you. You know, we recognize you. We love you. Keep doing it. Stay on it. So today. Hold on, hold on. Stay on it, doggone it. <laughs> doggone it. <laughs> Stay on it, doggone it. That, that might have to be one of our little Stay on job. it, doggone it. Stay on it, doggone it. Right on. Shoot. Well, today. Community dynamics, citizens. Community dynamics. So, what I did was I broke it down. Uh, Steve, if you like, some of these things aren't one hundred percent agreeable by everybody, but oh, I put it into the best definition that I thought was suitable for. And then I have a quote by uh, 
John D. Rockefeller Jr. that I, is phenomenal, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. phenomenal. But the, you know, civic duty, you know, what civic duty? The responsibilities of a citizen. We live in communities. We live with neighbors, and we commingle. We work, we, you know, co-workers. We we are. You're always going to be in a community unless you're one of those mountain men or something, you know. And even they have their community. He does. I mean, he's got his bear community. Never mind. Right. Gonna <laughs> the bear come out. He's got to be, be friends with the auditors and all that stuff, right. kind of stuff, you know. You know. He's oh, like, where else? Where's the but nuts? For real, though, man. I mean, it, when it's a community, it is a community, man. And it's and any time you can help flow within the community, it makes that community stronger. And can you imagine if everybody started to help flow? Exactly. You know. And so the civic responsibility duty obligation or responsibility the social force that binds you to courses of action demanded by that force now this is the our society right now is a perfect example of the reflection of this because the social force that binds you to the courses of action demanded by that force so if you live in a community where everybody mows their lawn. Perfect example, I was with my cousin, Skippers, what's up, Skippers? My cousin John Skipper, his wife Ashley, they got a beautiful family. Hey, Skip, hey, Ash. He, uh, I went over there, I like, you know, spending time with, you know, my fam and, you know, people like that, that mm -hmm. are, that are on that path. They're doing things mm -hmm. like how they, you know, pursuing that, mm -hmm. so that's beautiful. But, um, so he's like, I got to mow my lawn, you know. And I had my son with me, and he has kids, so they were all playing. So I was helping him with his yard stuff, you know, just, be, I, you know, I didn't have to. But, you know, mm -hmm. it's like, you know, let me help my cousin get it in, you know, mm -hmm. make it. So then I ended up recruiting all the kids, like, hey, there you go. why don't you guys pick up all this trash around the, you know, how about your uncle, how about your dad, let's do this real quick, then we can play some football or something, you know. Mm -hmm. And so... We got that done, but you know what, Steve? Everybody mm -hmm. else's lawn that needed some, guess who came outside and started doing their lawn? Yes. You know, the people that they're like, you know. They will follow suit. They apps. will follow suit. They will. And that is the social force that binds you to courses of action. You keep your lawn mowed. Your neighbor is going to look at your lawn like, that looks nice. I should do something mm -hmm. like that. It's inspiration. Right, and it's not like a trying to keep up with the Joneses. It's like, you know, let's keep this community looking good. So if you got a guy out there, well, i got to be like that. Well, you know what? That's the wrong way to think about it, man. It's like keep the community looking good. And, guys, I'm, I'm no better than anybody else. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. But, you know, like when I walk out of a Walmart or if I come out of wherever I'm at, a bag and save a mall or whatever, and I see trash in my path, I'll pick it up and I'll throw it away. I'll take that cart that I see at Walmart that's free floating cart. I'll put it back. Exactly. That's what I'll do. I mean, that's it's just it's just me keeping my community, you know, together as much as I can. I'm only one guy. And that was cool how you had um the family come out and operate as a team, as a group. Well, exactly. You know, and made a game out of it, and got everything done. Yeah, they got a little they got a little overzealous with the you know, the hedge clippers, because I got my machete. I mean, I was doing like... Some, you had machete. I was bushwhacking, straight up. I'm like... And you're trying to get this root from... Yeah, that was really... I mm -hmm. was so tired. That's but, good, though, man. Production, man. But Production is the basis of morale. This quote I found by... This is John D. Rockefeller Jr. If you don't know who Rockefeller is, then you need to check... I mean, one of the families that built America, mm -hmm. you know, corporate-wise and just... He did a lot. This is his son. He said, we must instill a sense of duty in our children. Every right implies a responsibility, every opportunity, an obligation, every possession, a duty. So just because you exist doesn't give you, you have the right to pursue happiness as a human being. It's not just an American right. Of, it's just like the right of a human being, like be happy. But you have to have a sense of duty, you know, because every right is a responsibility. We have the right to drive cars, mm -hmm. but you have to have a sense of responsibility with that. You can't just, that's why we don't drive into each other. Yeah. Amen. And we, I mean, you got, you got, you, there, there's, there's, you know, rules and regulations that you have to go by and they're not. So I want to go with this real quick and then I'll get back to that. Okay. And this is going to sound so opposite, but it's the, it's the complete truth. And this is no joke. 
the more responsible that you are, the freer that you are. The less responsible that you are, the more you become trapped. Right. Okay. And what I mean by that, we see a guy going out and he's not being responsible or anything. He's not being responsible for his life. Say his his uh his his taxes. Right. His license plates. He's not being responsible. Well, guess what? Who's coming after him? He's got to look over his shoulder constantly to see if there's um, an officer going to say, oh, am I going to get busted with these tags? Exactly. Man, am I going to be, you know, oh, my taxes. You know, so he's trapping himself by not being responsible. And that's as far as I'll go on that because that, that gets to be a real deep subject. But the more responsible that we are, the freer that we are. Yeah, that is true. Yeah. That is very true. I'm a lot more freer than what I used to be. At least to trap myself with all these, you know, barriers and mm -hmm. it's like I gotta have, have things like to's, this. I'd be, you know, you I'd know? be riding around with all kinds of crap in my car. Yeah, but man. then I'm like, and when a cop gets behind me, I'm like, Ugh. yeah, I'm like, you're trapping yourself. And yeah. maybe he, not, and I he did, might, and I did that exactly. You know, I could have been more strategic, mm -hmm. but I was being lazy, mm -hmm. and I was being, you know, just one track minded with it. Right, like I couldn't. You, no foresight. Right. It's just like, and then when you're sitting in jail, you're like, I don't wish I would have. And, and you, you always hear that. I wish I would have. Yep. So you what do. I started doing was before I would do pretty much anything, I would think I'd go through, I wish I would have. Mm -hmm. That could happen. And it'd be, now it's automatic. Yeah. I don't even really think about thinking about stuff like that. Mm -hmm. it's like, so, I, so I don't do a lot more I wish I would have. You just you just do. I would say it. I could have, mm -hmm. but not I wish I would have. Right, because that's wishful thinking right. is you know for fairy tales. So right, and sometimes the being has to go through a learning process. He does, or she does. We all do. Yeah, we all have to learn. We well, just can't you know so, go through life and not learn. And but well, we talked about that. Right. It's like, what are you going to teach your kids? You can't mm -hmm. teach them anything because you don't know anything. Right. So so we were talking about rules and regulations, right, before I went off on the responsibility right. thing. Okay. So, and, and it's not like a suppressive type of rule or anything like that. Like, let, let's take a car, for instance. Okay. So if we're out driving, okay, so the, really the only way to communicate with that car to let somebody know that you're turning is to have that blinker on. The car can't talk. Exactly. Right. right? So, it's, so it's basically, and it's a good law for protection. Use your blinker. That way you don't turn in front of somebody or somebody doesn't think that you're not going to turn when you are, you know, and yeah. bang, right? So that's, that's a law that you have to turn your blinker on. So it's not when I'm talking rules and regulations, I'm not talking about you do this or you do this or this is going to happen. It's to keep um, the community safe pretty much. And but we all know that there are some laws that get ridiculous um, or they get passed ridiculously on uh, just some idiotic idiotic assumptions well there's a difference between regulations that that make the community safer and then then laws that that bind people that try to suppress and suppress them yeah absolutely agreed agreed i mean one of my big ones is you know it, okay think about it like this there's a ban a federal ban on cannabis mm -hmm. okay I broke down the dynamics of this because it's this is really what people need to think about when they, they even if you don't agree with or even if you don't smoke, if you know somebody that does smoke, if you know they're you know sensible people, they're capable of doing their job. They're okay. Now think about how a lot of companies right now they drug test. What do they drug test for? Marijuana. And to me. Because it stays in your system for 30 days. Mm -hmm. You can't, you know. So even if you smoke 20 days ago, you might not smoke every day. You might smoke on the weekends. Mm -hmm. You might, and that's your business, you know. Mm -hmm. That the federal government has no business, you know. Boom, I'm. You can't do this and blah blah blah, mm -hmm. and that it's never been proven harmful to human beings, but it's illegal, and that puts people in that situation. So even though there is a there is there is a a large number of people that do they'll ride around and be smoking a joint, but you'll mm -hmm. get pulled over, you'll get a three hundred dollar fine. Now it's three hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. I don't know anybody that can pay a fine like that and be cool. Mm -hmm. So that just 
so that's what I'm talking about the suppression and the keeping you on a like that's but these rules and regulations are to for example last night this guy almost ran into us running a red light trying to get because it started hailing a little bit and he almost broadside on my side mm -hmm. and so when I get out the gas station I'm like hey man I don't care if it's hailing or not you don't endanger other people by driving like a prick. Mm -hmm. I was like, watch what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And then he calls me an asshole. And I'm mm -hmm. like, excuse me? And so then here comes the old Vendetti. Here comes, <laughs> hold on, here comes the overt motivator. You did something to me, I'm yes, doing something you to did you. So, and, oh. and then you want to talk to me like that? Yeah. And there goes that conflict dynamic again. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you what, I was on the really ugly side of it. Mm -hmm. I was like, dude, you need to drive away. Mm -hmm. Straight up. I was like, I'm done talking. And I'm getting rained on. <laughs> like, I don't care. I'm just like, I'm looking like a madman. <laughs> I still have my sunglasses on. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm not even thinking about anything. I just jumped out of the car at the gas station. I'm like, hey, dude. Like, what's up? Right. But, you know, community dynamics. You, you know, every right, a responsibility. Be responsible. Be, you know, pay attention. You're not the only person in these streets, in, your, in, in a house living you know that goes to work that has kids that a, lo a lot of us do a lot of us care about the same stuff mm -hmm. we just don't talk about it mm -hmm. you know because we're not a community that really co-mingles like it should yeah and you know the whole thing is is guys we've got to work together we just do you know we nobody can do it alone we got to walk out of this trap as a team a team straight up straight up because when it, the, the, the more detached citizens become from each other, I mean, that's what the government wants. It's easier for them to control people when they are scattered and, and they're not a collective. They're not, mm -hmm. they're not worried about sure. That's why they got all these distractions. There's, I mean, a you, ton. Yeah. You, you can go off. I see you wanting to go. A ton. I see you well, wanting I to mean, go. Well, <laughs> I mean, all people, it's like... It's like how often do you wake up and in between everything that you do and then go to sleep, how did you better your community that day mm -hmm. at all if you did, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think everybody has a responsibility, even if it's just a little thing, mm -hmm. you know, holding the door open for an elder, mm -hmm. you know, showing respect. Mm -hmm. Other people see that. Mm -hmm. Youngsters under you will see that. Mm -hmm. And they'll be like, you know what? And if you, and if you have respect, you know, that's going to carry on to them. They're like, you know, he's a respectable guy and he's out here. You know, I respected him as this guy out here in the streets, but I see he's this other, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. He's and that will carry a long way. Yeah, it's contagious. And it really is. And so now you're getting into social manners, which are those go a long way. So, you know, guys, and everybody's not everybody. A lot of people have lost it. Like when your lady friend comes in or a person that you respect comes in to the room and you're sitting there, it's pretty good to get up and stand up and wait till they sit down and then sit down right after them. Right. You know, that is, that's, that's class, man. That's social manners. And that's, that's very gentlemanly like as well. Fellas, you can still do that without losing your cool. You know, you can still be cool, do that. Matter of fact, make you more cool when you do that. Right. I'm just saying, man. I mean, that's what, like, for yeah. real, if you want, because you, the, t the type of lady you attract, it's, it's like uh, the law of attraction. If you're out there, no mannerisms, just, I mean, 100% slang all the time, you, you can't, you can't. Guess what you're going to get. Properly. Mm -hmm. Guess what kind of chick you're going to get. The same. And then guess what kind of kids you're going to have. And guess what kind of kids you're going to raise. Uh, so if you're, you know, law of attraction in attract a mode like where you're like, I want a nice girl. Mm -hmm. I don't want a hood rat. You know, some people like hood rats. I yeah. mean, I'm not one to knock somebody for what they like, but if, mm -hmm. I'm saying if you want a real woman mm -hmm. that is, you know, a woman to be respected, mm -hmm. where it's like, you know, if somebody calls her a bitch, they have no. No mm -hmm. validation for that. Right. It's like, no, nah, they're not, nah, dude. Like, you you got her mixed up with somebody else, mm -hmm. you know. And if you defend her honor, you're not feeling like, you know, 
Nobody does that for a hood rat. Mm -hmm. Like they really don't. So, <laughs> so what Joker's saying is, with the law of attraction, if those of you who don't know, Bob Proctor, Bob Proctor, Rhonda Byrne, Bob Doyle, um, law of attraction is phenomenal, and it's a, and it's a basic law of the universe, and it's it just states that like attracts like. So what you think about, you bring about. So if a guy says he does, he wants this, he wants this, he wants this, and he's acting a complete certain way, well, basically he's going to get it the way he's acting. He can say it all he wants, but it, when he actually puts thought and he puts his emotions and his mass behind his thought, I know that was a little deep, but that's all right. It's deep. You just you, you put what you want in front of your face and you go for it. If you want a beautiful, beautiful soulmate, then you, you write one down on a piece of paper and you will get it. But if you're acting a fool, remember, like attracts like. And that's with anything. Friend, peers, you know, job. Houses, money, yep. cars. You All want, that. Yeah. You want, you want a nice car, man? Put it in front of your face. I need to put it. Draw I it put it in front of my. I need to put a couple in front of my. Me too. As a matter of <laughs> fact, matter of fact, matter of fact, Joker. I think I think I've been using it because uh, it's time for me to get a new car. For real, what you gonna do with yours? Well, well, well the, the, cat, the Cadillac is overheating and I can't quite figure it out. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna go to CTS, man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh snap! CTS? I know. Yeah, CTS. Yeah, I'm gonna. Yeah. I'm gonna be riding with Steve from now on. Darn right. And it's, it's <laughs> see, it's white. It's got tan interior. Nice stereo system, nice GPS, and it's quiet above all. Right, so quiet. You got to hear it. You'd love it. Mine doesn't. It's so loud. But what you going to get? Law of attraction. Boom. You know, Think I, about what you want, not like, what you don't want, like, and not what you don't I have. I really, 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 really like that new Lexus that came out. Do you? Oh, my God. They're, <laughs> they're nice, man. But that is a lot. I mean... It's yeah. like it's not out of my reach, but yeah, it's just it. not in front of me. Put it in front of you. So I'm gonna have to put it. that in front of me. I think I'm gonna put that. You know, and, and I'm all my citizens out there, let's put help put joke, that in front of Joker. Yeah. It's, well, you write it up too, man. The law of attraction. So let Joker. Me, let, let me do this one too. So just along the law of attraction. So it gets you know it gets deep. You know, all the teachers, you know, always talked about it. You had Gandhi talk about it. You had Buddha, Christ. Um, Allah talked to, I mean, everybody, all the great teachers, man. All the teachers, all the prophets. All the great ones. And they talked about it like this. And so you would say, you know, if we looked at Christ, we would go, in the Sermon on the Mount, and it was, you have not because you ask not, right? Okay, that's cool. Right, we got it. All right. And where was I at with that one? I just lost it. Oh, it was a good one. What you think about, you bring about. Yeah, okay. The rich get richer and the poor get poorer. Well, the rich guy's thinking of riches, and what's the poor guy thinking? Poorness. Exactly. That's why he goes the opposite way. You know, so just think of riches, man. But actually, actually do it. And may your actions, being responsible in your community, treating others with respect, that comes right back to you. It really does. Real talk. And there it is, man. I mean, Real that's talk. straight up. So, community concepts. Mm -hmm. I find a lot of this stuff to be interesting. Because yeah. the sense of community directly relates to social capital. Mm -hmm. And it makes sense. But it's in my mind, it's wrong. Okay. Because that's why the law of attraction works in communities like that because and a, and a lot of people either don't want to change their community or don't want to break out of it because it's a comfort zone mm -hmm. you know some people are straight up i mean are lazy just you know well yeah up. i mean if you if you i mean if you really need government assistance and everything like that then yeah you need help but I know some people that just straight take advantage of it, mm -hmm. straight hustling, mm -hmm. and don't do a damn thing. Right. And man, kids are are dumbed down. Mm -hmm. They're not learning anything. They're it's they're, like, staying, they're like leeches on the community, and they're staying trapped because they're not taking responsibility. 
Right. And there gonna be an excuse for everything. Oh, my bunions are acting up. Oh, my foot's acting <laughs> up. Right. Oh, I got a, I got arrhythmia. That's a little, you know. Okay, I got all that. But let's let's get down, guys. And, you know, if you don't think you can do it, find somebody to help you do it, and then get you back on your feet, man. That's what's up. Because you need the community to be the team. And I cut you off again, Joker. Right. Did you? Sorry, I did. No, no, no. Actually, you didn't. I was just um. I mean, that was it for that sense of community yeah, social capital. Yeah, it's that was like, it. Yeah. <laughs> right and there. I'm like, hey, that, That's what I thought. <laughs> there's really not much more that it's like. Funny. <laughs> and like I was saying about the social responsibility and the social force that binds you to the course of action demanded by that force, the social capital. Because it, you go to some neighborhoods, they'll, if you're grass, they'll cut your damn grass. They'll be like, Man, or they'll say something to you. They'll be like, man, can you, or they'll call the city on you, mm -hmm. and the city will come cut your grass and then send you a bill for 500 bucks. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's another thing. I don't know if a lot of people know that. If your grass, if somebody calls on your grass and it, it looks like a, you know, it's yeah. like one of those nuisance laws. Right, and and, mm -hmm. and that's that's true. And also, you got to watch the extremeness of the other person, too. You know, so if, if that neighbor's calling, hey, guy's yard, and maybe he's got like a vendetta, vendetti, you know what I mean, yeah. right? Yeah. So he's calling a vendetta, yeah, and that that would be that would just be cause, causing chaos in the neighborhood. So exactly, you don't know dysfunction. Those, yeah, you don't need that kind of crap going on, but you do need to take care of your yard. I mean, you don't have to; it's up to you, but looks better. Right. And so, I found uh, there was a study done on communities, and they use the term because I was looking for stuff on community dynamics, and it was like dynamic learning communities, and I was like. That's that's pretty because in uh, some of the courses I take, there's a uh, the life cycle of a product, and so bless you. So from beginning to end, they think about sustainability, and they bring the builder, the engineer. They everybody's in the same room. It's a dynamic learning group, mm -hmm. and so before they even design it or when the concepts there they bring everybody in they're like what would be the best way to do this and everybody gives their input and it's way more efficient mm -hmm. so a dynamic learning community is the same thing you know we are observing our community right now like i said before in a couple of the episodes the responsibility of recognizing a problem and not doing anything about it is total ignorance yeah, total omission right and if you even if you know somebody and it's all about just speaking on it. Just speak on it. Boom. Mm -hmm. Hey, you know what? Something, something. I think that would be a good idea to solve this problem. This guy is really good at it. We should talk to him. Yeah. Or, okay, your neighbor's grass is too damn long. And he's like, I don't have a lawnmower. And you might not feel comfortable with a lawnmower. But you know a guy that has like two or three lawnmowers. He's trying to sell a lawnmower. Yeah. And you can even approach a guy like that. It's like, uh, I don't know if you have a lawn, but if you need to uh, buy one or borrow or even, you, you know, it. just there's a lot of people out there. Just, Hegel, you man. know, throw it in there like that. And he might have a lawnmower and he doesn't know. And you know something that's like, oh, the carburetor is a little dirty, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> Boom. Now your lawnmower works. Mm -hmm. It's because you communicated with your community and your neighbors and mm -hmm. you guys figured out something that was probably not even a big deal anyway. Exactly. But it is a big deal. Now you guys are neighborly, and you guys have a rapport. You guys have, you know. So now when you see him, you can be like, hi, Jim, or hi, Frank. Right. You know, if. And now you have communication with him. You have affinity with him, with him which is a degree of likeness. And you have reality with him. And there you go. Exactly. That's they the really basic. exist to you now. Yep. I mean, it's not just a person you see going in and out of their house. Mm -hmm. And you're, you know, I got, you know, at my cousins, there's these. Uh, parents, their kids come over because my cousin, they got a trampoline and, you know, toys and all this other So a lot of kids go over to their house. They're, they're like the neighborhood house to go play at mm -hmm. with uh, their kids and stuff. So, you know, I could tell some of these kids had a lacking sense of just I don't know if it's you know, you see something go like we're all picking up the stuff, and there were there were a couple of kids on the trampoline jumping around, and I'm like, hey, little John, you can tell them to beat it. Mm -hmm. You know, this is your yard, and this is your stuff. Like, if you're working, 
and your friends over here playing with your stuff, I was like, you have the right to tell them to beat it mm -hmm. until I'm done or right. help, you know, mm -hmm. because I said that is not, and he, but he was like, he was like, no, that's okay. He was like, oh, we'll be done in a little, you know, he's a really a good dude, but I, t I had to let him know. It's like, if you think it's unacceptable, don't feel bad about sending mm -hmm. somebody home, you know, say, I'm, I'll play with you later. Mm -hmm. I'm busy helping my uncle mm -hmm. and my dad, you know? So, but there are these kids, and there, a car pulled up in the front because uh, I was playing basketball with him, and he was still in the back. And I was like, you know, who's this? He was just sitting in the street. And then a couple of the kids ran up to him, and I didn't know who they were. So I'm like, you know, I got my cousin. I'm like, who's these? People? He was like, oh, that's their parents. He was like, I ain't never met him. He was like, they come and pick them up and just drive off. They never said hi or whatever like that. I'm like, for real. He was like, man, they don't even know me. Their kids over here all the time. He was like, I could, I could be a child rapist. Mm -hmm. I could be beating my kids' asses, mm -hmm. and they don't even know. Yeah, you know. And I'm like, damn, those are really crappy parents. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a shame. You can, I couldn't go anywhere unless my parents met the other parents and talked to them for a little bit mm -hmm. and kind of felt them out. And it's like, okay, I mean, they're not safe. scumbags, right? Make sure they weren't dealing meth right beneath your nose, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's all kind of like... Oh, yeah, I've, I've seen it, man. I mean... The Ohio thing. You know? I mean, mm -hmm. just think if kids were playing... That went to the neighbor's house next door and they were always playing there. I mean, next door to a child snatcher. Mm -hmm. And nobody really... And that's what happens in communities when people don't communicate. Straight up. I mean, you're... I bet you can go to any part of any city any part the good part the ghetto where rich people live whatever like that take a four block radius i guarantee you there is a molesting scumbag in one of those houses in a four block radius they're everywhere i mean it is not safe like it used to be because it used to be people weren't so detached people weren't so into their own Fame. house Mm -hmm. Their own P their PS threes and their, mm -hmm. you know, their big screens and like they're in the house. Nobody's outside anymore. Mm -hmm. Nobody's looking around. Nobody is checking things out. You hear, we were outside smoking a cigarette and you can just hear a kid screaming inside of a house from somewhere. I'm like, and he's like, he was like, man, I hear it all the time from the house because they were fighting the night before when I was over there. The, the guy and, it, and I'm like, damn, dude. I was like every night he's like yeah the cops be down there and they got kids i'm like that is just mm -hmm. and a part of me wishes that i can just like go talk to people like that and be like hey man like what's the issue mm -hmm. like you know this isn't healthy for your kids at all i mean y your kids are going to grow up and be like you and i see that and i just i don't appreciate it i don't like it and mm -hmm. i'm not going to look at it and not say nothing mm -hmm. straight up like that's how i feel now and mm -hmm. and I mean, I don't know. It's it pisses me off. Well, you and they'll go, but you don't you don't have no business telling me how to run my raise my child. Well, you know what? Actually, I do. And he does because guess what? I don't want that child out on the streets, um, endangering my, me or my family. Exactly. I don't want him growing up to be a criminal. Not saying he's going to be one, but he, he he grows up in an aberrated environment, and aberrated means not on a straight line. Um, of course, I'm, all families got a bunch of stuff, but when you have a chronically messed up, aberrated family, you're going to have a chronically messed up, aberrated child. Guaranteed. And I, yeah, and I don't want that on the streets. I don't want that. I don't want that harming me when I'm taking my family out to Six Flags Walt Disney World. I don't want some kid that has, you know, been raised horribly. You know, and it, and it, it was a product of his environment. Yeah, it's not of, even his fault, and that's what sucks. Well, right, but he—I mean—he does have his own thing, and of course, everybody's responsible for his own condition. But right. at that age, he's getting all this stuff slammed in on him. Yeah. he can't do anything, bro. He can't, you know. He—he's—he's, he's, you know, ten years old, and he's got to be told what to do, what to eat, you know, how he's going to eat, how you know he's—he doesn't have any self-determinism. Yeah. So now he operate, he's operating on other people's determinism which were aberrated, and now he's going to come out here in society and try to aberrate my little universe? No. Yeah, <laughs> no, it ain't it's... happening, baby. So sometimes you do have to stand up. Yes, you do. And I... <laughs> yeah, so like you were saying on that house, I mean, if you felt like you had to say something, I mean... I've, I've been a little more aggressive on... Because this is what else happened. 
And then I was with my cousin <clears throat> a couple of times this happened. We went to the uh went to the store. We're coming out. There's a guy pulling through the parking lot. And he's just looking at us like like mugging us. And he has his son in the car. Yeah. And I'm looking at him and I look at my cousin. I was like, Did you see that? Mm-hmm. He's like, Yeah, man, I don't know why. And I was like, like, see, that's one thing that really irritates me. Mm-hmm. It's it's what is that? What is that mean mug? Why do you feel like you have to you want to challenge in real in, and I'm like, most people aren't ready for a challenge when they do that. It's just programmed into them and it's and it's and then it's all programmed. why like you know, they get drug out of the car and beat up or mm-hmm. worse. Mm-hmm. And you got your son with you and you're trying to act hard mm-hmm. instead of being like, What's up, man? So And you're showing your son that. Yeah. And it's a total contra survival act. And, and you can tell a person by, does this guy do more destructive acts or does he do more survival acts? Right. And if he does more survival acts, and hey, you know, everybody will mess up. I mean, I do it. I mess up, man. I'm sure Joker, I don't know. Do you mess up? <laughs> everybody messes up. I saw up this young cat saying. yesterday. Well, hold on real quick. Oh. So everybody, and I'm, I'm with you, everybody messes up. I don't care who you are. I don't care who you are. But if you want to do more survival acts than destructive acts and the guy riding around with his kid mean mug and joker what's he showing the kid another destructive act yeah that's like, what he's showing you man or showing i don't kid. even know what he said to his son after we walked past he could have been like punk ass go to some stone mm-hmm. and it's probably because he was in a bad mood over something else who knows you know it could have been anything and it's like but why carry that I mean, I'm I'm really guilty of that. Sometimes it's caring, mm-hmm. you know, something, some BS from one situation to another mm-hmm. one. But I, I've learned to check myself more and more on that because that, that is so destructive. And when people sense in your voice that hostility, or even just your just your bod, bodily, you know, actions, you're just like, mm-hmm. you know. Moving around all aggressively, and you're just like, you know, you know it's all that reaction. What's y'all worked up for? Like, instead of like, yeah, man, like, you know, you can talk about stuff that bothers you, and still be pissed off about it, but you don't have to carry that because that's contagious, like the law of attraction. Like mm-hmm. If I'm talking to you, and I'm like, man, yeah, and that was, you know, instead of like, yeah, man, that was just, and I can't even believe that. Can't believe that. Yeah, yeah and I'm, but I'm, but I'm, I'm smiling about it to see, even though I'm pissed off, right? Because I can still be mad and smile. I figured that out, mm-hmm. but I'm still tricking my mind mm-hmm. because I'm smiling, mm-hmm. and it's like it's not a big deal, right? And then five minutes later, I forgot about what the hell I was mad about. Right, and you know, and you're getting self control, and you know, and Joker, just like we were talking, I think it was show number one, we were talking about the reactive mind. You know, it's it's wonderful when you have a person that acts more analytically than reactive. Right. You know, but like we were saying, I think that was show number one or two, is that society's becoming much, much more reactive. Boom. Oh, yeah. Mad. And I'm going to go ahead and go off for a minute. Mad. Pissed. I got my, I'm got. i in my car with my kid. Man, I'm not having a bad day. Joker comes by me in a car, and I'm going to mean mug him. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really, dude? Come like, on. Hey, you don't even know that man. <laughs> I know. And he doesn't even know what he's mad about more than likely. He just, right. He's just pissed at something, right? And he's reactive. He's, you know, reactive time bomb. So, and we don't need that going around, guys. We need to act analytically, not reactively, right? And, and you know what? I know it's hard. I do. I mean, I, I've seen it. People are pissed, and they just they get depressed, and they get all this and all Rush that. hour. Rush hour, you know, <laughs> right, and we do. And rush hour does thing, you know. Atlanta, Man. you ever in Atlanta rush hour? Oh hell no! I have. I wouldn't survive. Cars it. on fire. Well, somebody shit. wouldn't survive it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that road rage. I got now, serious road rage. Right, and and it, and so all that stuff, you guys, it's reactive stuff. So I handle all that stuff down in the Midwest Life Center. That's what I do. I take all the charge out of the reactive mind, so a man or woman or child can operate at an anica little level which is a smarter level than the reactive level the reactive mind is stupid the reactive mind is a equals a equals a equals a which means that pack of cigarettes equals joker's black shirt equals my golf shoes equals my club equals why i'm pissed off because that lights on 
<laughs> that's how dumb Real it is. I mean, that's how it goes, man. I mean, that's that's how the reactive mind works, man. And, you know, like I said, I'm only one. I'm standing up, and I'm trying to help people get this thing out of them or get rid of them, get it out of them so they can act analytically. So when that guy goes by you joking with his child, he goes, hey, Joe, what's happening? This is Tim. Tim, tell him what's up. You know? Yeah. Instead of me mugging you. Yeah. <laughs> I go, yeah. I guess. And this is this is chemistry right here. And this is yeah. basic chemistry. You can check this out. Research what happens when two rea really reactive chemicals combine. Exit. You don't want to be close. You know, that is awesome. If may I expound again? I think it was show number two. We were talking about yep. the, the group dynamic, mm -hmm. right? which were the bars. Right, and remember when I was telling you know it's becoming more and more reactive out there, even on the streets, even as you walk down, let alone in a bar when somebody's drinking. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay, so put two reactive uh, minds together and boom, put some more chemicals in there too. Mm-hmm. All the chemicals. <laughs> exactly. Dude. He like, nailed. Wow. You nailed it, baby. You nailed it. That uh, that unstable atomic element just got really more unstable when we added this to it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Let's just. Give that beaker. Let's pour that on there too. See what happens. Exactly. Ooh, boom. You got any iodine? Let's watch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but if we can get communities to be more dynamic, dynamic learning. So we start a maybe a discussion group on Google Plus, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and it'll be you call it Dynamic Learning Group One. Mm-hmm. And so, what we would do is, you go on there, we'd post a discussion, we would talk about it. Other people, you know, it's like, we would, like, hey, you have a certain set of skills, you're, you seem, would you like to join this dynamic learning group that we just, you know, just talk about, you know, things in general and kind of, right. but then bring that to where you live. May I? Yeah. You're absolutely correct. Because a theory is only a theory. I mean, I love theory, but you know what? Theory is no good to me if I cannot apply it. It has to be applicable theory. If it doesn't, then just cool. Yeah, whatever. I mean, you, you, people can talk about this, that, whatever. Theory. What does, yeah, theory, which is cool. Which is, I mean, it's great. It's great to look, you know, at, at different angles. But let's make sure that that angle actually works and you're not just talking to talk. Exactly. It's got to be a workable theory, and it's got to be provable in the streets. The common man has to be able to use it to make his life better. Exactly. I mean, because a dynamic learning community isn't comprised of all professors and mm -mm. teachers and people that have degrees. Yeah, man. I mean, mm -mm. it's it's useless without the guy that's damn near homeless that has the crappiest shoes you've ever seen falling apart holding up a sign in the street he needs to be a part of that too because guess what that dude knows something you know what he knows he knows what not to do again like and amen what, you know what i'm saying <laughs> he can joking. tell you he'd be like this is how i got here and right. he'd be like well that's not what i'm gonna do right so you, you everybody's learning from that mm -hmm. he could have been a broker you mm -hmm. know on wall street mm-hmm and he should have came and saw me before he went down the tubes, man. <laughs> but, I mean, really, you know, because he's got his stuff, too. You know, he, he didn't take responsibility for something. You right. Know, wife could have left him, could have broke his heart like a whatever. But he's in that position. But, like Joker said, he can tell you what not to do. He can tell you what not to do. Be like, that. I let that emotional distress get to me so hard that I took my focus off of my job. And then I lost everything. Off of myself. I didn't. And I could never get back yeah. to where I was at again. I gave up my power is what he did. You know? He exactly. Did. He gave his power. But it, you drive past him and you look at him like, scumbag, holding up a sign. Why doesn't he get a job? Why mm -hmm. doesn't he, you know? It's like, you don't know what his story you know, is. Yeah, he, I, could, he could be an amazing person. He could be the most influential person you've ever met in your entire life. He could. Or he could just be nobody. Or, or he you could, never know. It, right. Or he could be the guy like this. And the only reason you're going to know is if you ask and communicate. Now, exactly. I saw one, Joker, this was, this was awesome. I was in Kansas City. Yeah. Right? Around 39th and Broadway. And I'm in this parking lot, right? And this, this guy comes up. I mean, he's homeless. 
Had to have been, right? Now, you, I'm a good-hearted man. I am, and you know that. Right. And I try, but I'll, you know, I also have there's certain, you know, I got things that you got to be truthful with me, baby. That, right. You know, that's what's up. So, so he goes, hey, man, he says, you got a dollar, I need a dollar for a sandwich. I'm like, yeah, right. Man, and I didn't. I, all, I had, all I had was my credit card, and he wasn't getting that, right? You know, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a cool guy, but I ain't that cool, you know. So uh, it so happens that I was down there doing some stuff. So I had I had a, a lunch basket. Right. You know, it was about six at night, you know. It was full of sandwiches. Man, I don't have a buck, but I got this sandwich. And this is no joke. Man, I don't want that sandwich. Get away from me. Right. I'm like, man, he was gonna he was going to take it. And go mess up someplace. Right. Like, I don't know what he was going to do like, with I'm it. I'm one dollar closer to a crack rock. But he lied to me. Mm-hmm. You know? So get on out of here with you, but it's. Self. I mean. You be truthful. Come talk to me. Inherent in character of that. I mean, I I, I mean, but, you have your experience with drug addicts, and I have my experience with sure. drug, yeah. drug addicts. But to me, most of them are unsavable. They let it consume them so much. They damn near giving up their kids and everything else they got, and they're in this abyss of hopelessness. Yeah, baby, they got a bottom and self loathing. Mm -hmm. They don't even want to get out mm -hmm. because the only thing that they have is that drug now because they screwed everything else up. Mm -hmm. So they're, I mean, they don't really have anything to work for. I mean, unless they want to better themselves and. 90% of them don't care about that. Yeah, and Joker, on that note, I mean, we could get hellaciously deep on that. Yeah. We could. <laughs> we could. We could, man. On oh, just the uh, that far? Um, yeah, on that, on that far. That, that Have you ever brought somebody out of an addiction that was where they totally were, I mean, rock bottom, health shot, and just they've lost all their family and really didn't have anything else to... Well, actually, if they're coming to see you, they obviously have something to, unless it's for court. Or to or, get better, you know. Yeah. Or, or just to go, man, you know what, I think I could, something tells me I could be doing better. Well, you can be. I mean, yeah. This is, well, yeah, that's but, called your common sense saying, dude, what the hell are you doing? Yeah, I'm just getting some like, stuff off. You can too. be doing better. Yeah, you know, everybody's got case. I don't care who you are, you know. Um, you listening, you have your case. I've got my case. Joker has his. Everybody on the planet's got case. Some just have more than others, and we just help them with oh, that yeah. and get it off. And then you, I got, man. Everybody's got it. Man, Everybody's I got, got people have no idea. I, like, I suffer from, like, serious depression mm -hmm. and, you know, anxiety, yeah, multiple we, personality you, disorder. You're coming like, in with me. I'm bipolar as hell, but. Oh, I didn't know that. All right, cool. Oh, yeah. Well, come on, see me then. Right, if, you, if, you, if you could have, if there was a camera observing me <laughs> through throughout my day, right? I swear to God, Steve, you'd be like, Okay. Like, you wouldn't even believe it. Like, right. the stuff that comes out of my mouth is when I'm by myself, when I'm enraged, and mm -hmm. when I'm, I'm not even a person, it seems like. It's just, and I'm, and I'm thinking, and there's, there, there's me inside of me, like, damn, I'm messed up. It's I like, need to, you but yeah. know, but then the, the, this dude is too powerful sometimes. The other guy inside, and he just, he's like, shut up, sit down. And the real you is, the real me is like, okay, like, it's, it's, but I've been trying to contain that and understand it and deal with it as best as I can. Right on, Joker. I without can't... medication. Right. Well, exactly. I don't. I don't. You know. Without uh -uh. medication. We ain't doing medication. Baby. We ain't doing medication. We're doing. He we're, it, when when I bring a client in, right? And Joker, anytime you want to come, baby, I would be more than happy. Yeah, you blow you. Yeah. Mm. Seriously. Mm. So my my thing is, and I'm gonna answer the other question that you answered me too about clients coming in who are all messed up and rock bottom yeah. but my thing is nutrition i mean nutrition because here's what's going down with with 90 percent of the stuff you got a guy that's uh he comes in he's depressed and he's on stuff right the doctor says, here take this they don't know what the hell that stuff does they don't ask them guys i've got dvds i've got doctors swearing by that stuff that it's they don't know what it does they do not know what it does so <laughs> anyway but well, what we do know that it does is it supplies dopamine from the pill itself, right? So, and all that's doing is taking away from the brain where the brain's not producing its own protein and its own dopamine. So, to make a long story short, nutrition, protein, fruits, vegetables, protein, fruits, vegetables, everything. You know, and we're talking nutrition, man. You get it up, the person starts producing the own, their own dopamine out of their own brain. 
Because what was going on is the pill was doing it for him. And the brain just said, you know what? I don't need to do it anymore. So let me wait on this pill. Right. And guess what the person gets addicted to? Oh, my God. Yeah, you got it. I need a the, freaking Xanax. Yeah, that's right, brother. So, Joker, yes, a life enhancement center. And these these are my people. We, remember you were talking about groups? Right. Basically, it's a mastermind group, right? So what happens is if I have a client that I – and these, these guys are trained, I mean, like – Oh, I love them. I get goosebumps just talking about them. And that's Les and Anita up in uh, the Life Enhancement Center of Coeur d'Alene. And that's where I got my training. Where's it at? Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Okay. Yeah. So they train me, right? And so they basically are my case supervisors. So if I go, you know what, Anita, what's the best way to approach this one? Well, we could do this. We could do this. You know, and it's like, and then I, I, I make the decision on how we're going to do it. We do it, and it works. So I've got my own mastermind group, and we've got our own people that, you know, if I've got a client, you know, I'm, we're backed 110% by some of the best in the world, man. And that's no joke. That's what's up. You know it, baby. So, yes, so at the Life Enhancement Center of Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, the, and we do a detox up there. Okay, so Narconon, right, we do the same thing Narconon does, right? I and, know about and, that place. Yes, and that was developed um, by – that was developed by Elon Hubbard and – the government's got it. It's Narconon. And what it does, it's a body detox is what it is, right? And the body detox basically takes all the drugs out of the system. And it's a sauna pro. It's a sweat program with sauna, but nutrition is, is on the point, okay? And everything is done on point. Um, it's used niacin in all kinds of vitamins, oils, and... Niacin burn. Oh, yeah. You would be amazed. You'd be amazed. I've done it before. Right. So, so, but this is done very, very methodically, and it's done right. So they take the person through the program, right? So as they go through the program, they up their niacin, but they up their vitamins, they up their oil, right? Boom, 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 boom. It goes up, and the person basically detox them. All that stuff, all that crap, the meth, whatever, the pot, the NyQuil... The fertilizer, the stuff, the guy smelled the uh, the fire he was in, the, all those particles, they get trapped in your fat. Yep. Right? So when the person's done with the program, he knows that he's done because he feels toxin-free. Word. Word. Then when you're toxic-free. Then you can start then getting you can your start. start getting yourself better. Right. And then you can participate positively in your community dynamics. There you go. You and can be a part of a dynamic learning community. Yeah, I'm getting goosebumps and just talking about it. I positive. Mean, yeah. It, I mean, guys, it is just hellacious. It, it's, when I, I say that, I've said that word twice today. But no joke, it, it is on point, baby. So if you guys are looking for any of that out there, go to MidwestLifeCenter.com. Check them out. We'll help you out. For sure. Then we can get to their community Duties. Just start expanding. Boom, yeah. man. You can start talking to people. And people will see it in your eyes. Your eyes are clear. Mm -hmm. You're, you know, your, your thought process is clear. You, you know what's going on. Yeah, you're, you're, like, yeah. You're, you're precise. You're thinking. And you're positive. You're, yeah. So let's say, like, in these communities, dynamic learning communities are groups of people who form a learning community generally get characterized by the following. Dis distributed control, commitment to the generation and sharing of new knowledge, Flexible and negotiated learning activities, autonomous community members, high levels of dialogue, interaction, and collaboration. That's everybody coming together, talking, working out ideas, and solutions. Mm -hmm. And a shared goal, problem, or project that brings common focus and incentive to work together. Because I have a platform like that. It's... I call it Citizen Movement Coalition, mm -hmm. and it was a for, it's a formation of subcommittees, and you know, they're assigned duties and you know mission statements to pursue. It's like this is what you know this subcommittee is going to do. We're going to work on getting more nutrition into neighborhoods that don't have grocery. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, I do. That like you were talking about the nutrition, mm -hmm. and that's you know in a lot of these communities there's not even available you know nutrition that like fruits and you know they were like in new york city and some of the boroughs like in and in the ghettos they don't they have the corner stores you can buy you know 
pork rinds and pig's feet, and, uh, but you can't get an apple or a banana or an orange, you know? And there have been some people that have formed groups that, you know, go to, the, and they're like, look, we want to bring, you know, introduce fresh fruit, you know, vegetables, mm -hmm. you know, to your marketplace. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and a lot of them, you know, are participating. And now they have bananas and apples and, you know, oranges and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So you, you, you get, you know, you take care of that. When a, a healthy mind is a positive mind. And it is. It is. It, it's not going to be thinking all kinds of, ah, I can't do this, can't do that. Healthy, but come on, let's hungry. go. I know man. when I'm hungry, I'm a, I'm a prick. Right, and yeah. Like, straight up. Mm -hmm. If I'm malnourished and I'm, I, I was a jerk this whole week because I couldn't eat right. Yep. And you, and, and I, that had a lot to do with it. I was malnourished. And, and you know, and, and truth be told, and I will always tell it, I mean, I was on steroids in uh, high school and college, right? Yeah. And I was. And I tell you what, don't dare get hungry on the on the roids. <laughs> I turn, yeah, I turn into a horrible, horrible man. man. Seriously, man, gross. Gr but yeah, um, when you're hungry, that just, that just shows you. Okay, after, this was a good example of. Uh, we talked about this earlier when I was explaining the DLCs. Mm -hmm. So it says distributed control. Now, hold on, when he says DLCs, he means uh, dynamic, dynamic learning. Community. Dynamic learning community. Yep, dynamic learning community, okay. DLC. So in a typical classroom, the teacher is in charge. The teacher makes all the important decisions, such as what to teach and how to teach it. In a DLC, nobody is in control. Everybody is. Conventions, shared understandings, rules for setting dis settling disputes or for governing communications, all these are negotiated and agreed upon by the group as a whole. So are learning goals and methods. If one member has a different vision for where the group should be going, this is presented to the group and discussed. The community is bigger than any single member, yet it encompasses the perspectives of all members. So it's like having a city council within city councils, within city councils, within city councils. Mm -hmm. Very democratic, if you would. Exactly. Yeah, and there's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. It, 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 Joker, if, if, okay, so Joke's got a new rap song coming out, right? Oh, yeah, he's got a jam going on there. Okay, so uh, he loves it. He likes it. Well, you got, you got me going, you know, Joker, I think maybe there should be a bridge in there. What do you think, everybody? You know, put a bridge in that jam. See right. what happens. You know? Something like and that. And it's like, oh, yeah. yeah right? Like, that sounds much tighter. Right. I like that. Like, thanks for your input, Steve. You're very, very welcome. Yeah, and, and you know, I, every decision is the right decision when it best suits the greatest good for the greatest number of dynamics. I had a – you a Star Trek fan? I do like Star Trek, yes. I like the old Star Trek. The old I like Star Captain Trek? Kirk, baby. You like okay? I'm Captain Picard. You like Picard? Okay, yeah, right. Yeah, he's he 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 he's a stand up dude. Okay, right. Uh, he's you know he was chivalrous and he was yes like, yes know. yes he is. I uh, my mom got me into it. Okay. When I was probably in the sixth grade or so like that, uh -huh. and then through junior high, and then I kind of like found girls, and then I stopped watching. So. <laughs> <laughs> the heck with Picard. But I'm gonna go talk to Susie. Um, I've always been a fan <laughs> of the Next Generation. Star Trek and because it when I watched it and I never even realized it at the time but it was they were a dynamic learning community and they were you never heard about money and I never thought about it have you ever heard about money in Star Trek have you ever talked talk about when they were talking about uh, the old Star Trek when they were talking about tribbles when those things mass produced like they produced exponentially do you remember that they were like little uh, guinea pigs, but they weren't. They just like made squeaky sounds, and they would mate exponentially. So two would have four, four would have eight, eight would, yeah. and they would just get crazy. And the guy's like, "I want to make all kinds of money," but then he got overrun with triples. It was terrible. Well, see, in the <laughs> in the by the next generation, because I think that one was, I don't know how many years it, or thousands of years in, in the past before the, but the there when they had the movie. Uh, First Contact. Mm -hmm. Jody Foster. Oh, no, the Star Trek. First okay, Contact. I'm sorry. And it's, uh, oh, what's that chick's name? She's played in a lot of stuff. But The bald chick? Yeah, she had real short hair. Black uh, chick. Ahura? No, yeah, her name was Ahura. But yeah. they, was, they went back in time to the first space uh, or warp drive, warp technology. The guy figured out ooh, All right. warp speed. Right. And and she ended up getting transported from the uh, up to the ship. She didn't know where she was at, and he was trying to, you know, cards like this. And she's asking all these questions. She's like, "How much did this cost?" 
Mayor's like, well, it's kind of difficult to explain that because money doesn't exist in the future. He said, uh, monetary gain is no longer a drive for people. We learn to better ourselves and better those around us. Mm-hmm. And I thought about it, and I was like, like, no, I was like, I ne- like, you know, all, and I never heard about like, talking about dude, when do all, I get my paycheck and when do it, but they all, all money is is a freaking concept. It's nothing. Exactly, it's, it's nothing. freaking nothing, man. I mean, it, it's 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 nothing. It's not. You just you do you produce an effect and you get money. Wow. Because let's just say, right. okay, the world we live in. When you went to school, when you started going to school as a kid, your mm-hmm. aptitudes are being tested constantly. Mm-hmm. While you're learning social skills above everything, mm-hmm. you're learning how to communicate more than you're not learning how to be physical. You're not learning how to be. You're learning how to be a negotiator. How to be a, you know, a speaker. Right. And so. When you get to be, what, 16, 17, whatever like that, they find out your real aptitudes, and you're like, you'll be good for this. Mm-hmm. And this is what you're going to do. Mm-hmm. you know. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Some people might call it communism, but I'm like, if you look at us today, we're so dysfunctional. Kids don't, know, want, don't even know, want to know what the hell they're doing. They don't know what they're doing. It's they don't know what they, they want to do. They've had they want to s- do what makes them the most money. That's what they want to mm-hmm. do. And that is their that is why they go to that's why they go to college and they they're like I want to make as much money as then they get these big ass college loans and then they understand that they just got screwed, right? And if if that child could have his own self determinism amped while growing up, he would know exactly what the heck he wanted to do. Exactly, and he would pursue it. He would pursue it like he was going to be rich. But let's just say he will be. I guarantee you, if he does what he wants to do and he's self-determined doing it, not unless it's a destructive act, that kid is going to make some cash, guaranteed. And who cares about the cash? All he wants to do is produce the effect of his own self-determinism. Or right. His own self-determinism. But what if money didn't exist mm-hmm. and you were, you know, it's like, hey, this is what you can do for this amount because this is what you're good at mm-hmm. and this is what you and if your aptitude are that anyway it's what you're going to like to do mm-hmm. i mean that's kind of like a no-brainer mm-hmm. if you're good at something then you probably like to do it yeah and, and you have somebody that has a natural thing god i like math but god i'd rather i'll be playing guitar well what do you want to do but there's math and music, though. And there's well, a God, hell of yeah, math and music. That's you, can, hell of, you know it, man. Man, so if you're good at math and you want to play the guitar, then yeah. you might, like... What's a third? You can well, make a new the, guitar. You mm-hmm. can create a new guitar. You could. A new type of guitar that does all kinds of weird you stuff. You're talking genius. That, you know, Absolutely. Exactly. For sure. And so the, the pursuit of financial gain for your livelihood... Mm-hmm. Because that's what people say. Oh, I lost my job. I don't have my livelihood anymore. Because you can't right. pay for all your crap anymore. I, I know somebody <laughs> exactly you know like that. Oh, God, yes. Absolutely. So was that job really your livelihood? Or is all this crap your livelihood? They mocked up that that job mm-hmm. was their livelihood. Well, I got I to gotta exactly. do this. I got to have all this money. I got to have it. Well, you know what? Yes, money is wonderful. I love the stuff. I think it's great. I love to wallow in it. It's phenomenal stuff. But you know what? I use it to help people, man. I don't, that's not my sole drive in life. My, my sole drive in that? life, because I'd rather help. Because I know through law of attraction, as we were talking earlier, right. when I have what I want to do, I love to play music. I don't even think about the money, right? This is no, this is no joke, Joker. Right. I love music. I do. So, and I'm a DJ, and I love to help people. I love to help people. So I've got both flows going here. Where the money just comes. You do what you love to do, and the money comes. I get paid well. I right. do. You know? And when I'm, I'm you know, getting this private practice rolling here, I love to do that. And the money's starting to come in that, too. So I really don't even think about the bucks. I'm, but I know it's there. You know, I love to do it. Um, you love to do a lot of attraction states. You're going you're gonna to get it right back. Yeah. And when you can do it by helping others, it'll come back sevenfold. It just will. Damn, we're, on my, we're out of time already. Uh, are you really? Sucks. Yeah, we're gonna have to. We're gonna have to, we're gonna have to like bring this back next week. All right. Where are we at anyway? Uh, learning community. We were just on the definitions of uh, DLCs, DLCs and. I think we're I mean, learning communities where we were at. Yeah. yeah. But I'm gonna. 
I'm going to leave them with, well, while I look for it, make sure you guys go to omahahiphopawards.com. Get your tickets. The Hip Hop Awards are in July. It's mm-hmm. going to be at the DC Center. Nice and extravagant. And it's you a nice are, place, yeah. Oh, don't, yeah, you, it, it is. Played Woo! that many times. This huh? is going to be, you know, uh, last year was still fun, but this, this is going to be more of an extravagant, like, it's going to be, you know, the bomb. It's, it's going to be a Can bomb. Can I say bomb on the radio? Yeah. <laughs> the Atomic Bomb dot com. Oh my god, the Atomic Bomb dot com. <laughs> yeah, check out Omaha Hip Hop Awards dot com. You can also you can also go to lgenius.com. dot com. Check him out. Check out Steve Lindsay, Midwest Life Center, MidwestLifeCenter.com. dot com. If you need some help with your addiction, you yeah. got some stuff inside you. I will help you. I guarantee you. He's he's he is the dry cleaners for the soul. Mm-hmm. So check him out. Check me out on Facebook, Vendetti's Block. Um, uh, you can Google me. I got all kinds of stuff going on. So yeah, check me out. If you want to post something on Vendetti's block, something you got, uh, you know, questions or anything like that, just post them around the page. It's all good. We'll acknowledge them next week. Um, I don't know if I've ever said that before because I, I don't have a lot of input for what's, but I, I'd want some input from citizens. I want to know if this, if this is, if this is helping you guys at all, if this is, you know, let me know. Let me know how we're doing. We're trying to help you. So, That's you know, what's peace up. and love. Steve's DJ tonight at Bogies. It's gonna be karaoke. I'm gonna have to go up. I right, man, I'm about to go up there. Up there I'm gonna get on the mic down. tonight because I'm feeling way better. Than Good I've been man. This whole week. Good. I, yeah, I, get I on the mic. Drink two beers on Thursday. I was pissed off. Right. On. <laughs> yeah, and I've got uh, my man Imperial out there, man. He's from uh, California. Oh, Imperial's coming up. There? Yeah, he always comes up now, and I found. That's my boy. I know, and you know, he made a jam. About the Phoenix, right? Did he? He did. So I, I found that one today, so I'm, I'm going to go ahead and spin that one tonight. Oh, yeah. yeah. You might have spent some up in the room, too. Yeah, I spin up in the room. Up Absolutely. in the room. We'll do it, man. All right. We love y'all. Take care of yourselves and each other. I stole that from Jerry Springer. Church. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome. Good to have you. Introducing... The legend itself, non-profit profit. The epitome representation of a citizen nation. Words encapsulate the many problems which we are facing. The engineer to the designer. The flame of the fire that forms a platform for citizens that elevate higher. The sound of the trumpet, warning wars begun between the rebel aliens and the ignorant ones. Bring my fellow citizens to the plane that I'm from. Cause ignorance will leave your brain dead, same as a slug. A straight shooter focus like a laser, same as my gun. The epitome and summary of all the above. Bridging gaps like overpasses, hence I'm bridging the masses. Breaking barriers and walls and flipping ball when it smashes. I'm a general, like captain, a lieutenant, and leader. Since following examples of my citizen senior. The pillars of wisdom, my professors and teachers. All citizen students to progress the procedure. Now I carry the torch, my prophet, prophet, and preacher. Gatekeeper to the kingdom, ever told me St. Peter. Light bearer and savior, Luciferian Jesus. With the power to convert you by the end of this thesis. Keep the words of the written in a reflective condition. Free your mind from any sense of interjecting suspicion. Keep your logic and reasoning, common sense in your wisdom. The only two you need to have when your adventure begins. Pay attention, citizens, to the words that I'm speaking. Every Sunday at 4 o'clock, it's real talk on Vendetti's block.